This is the Land Rover Defender 90, that short version in the all new Defender generation. And we will solve the question, is this the best Land Rover you can buy? Is it still the most unique and most iconic one? And would I even buy one over a Mercedes G-Class? Let's find out here together. It's Thomas and Autogefühl. Let's go! Now 20 centimeters or 8 inches wider than the predecessor. Now no leather frame anymore, aluminum unibody structure and independent suspension. Well, this one has nothing in common with the predecessor. But what does it have in common with the Land Rover or even Range Rover Brothers? You'll find out, especially in the driving part. A strong styling here, so upright, so angular. That still makes it so extremely unique on the market overall. LED headlamps are standard, optional also matrix LED and a Tasman blue color for today. Not quite a Thomas blue, but as Thomas blue as it gets for the moment, still a very unique color indeed. And yeah, thinking about the Tasman C, why not? And the nice silver contrast in the lower part. Styling wise, yeah, it's still the angular Land Rover styling. And I think as good as it gets here in their lineup. Isn't it? What's your take on that? And a special styling also for the turning indicators already here in the front. Really fancy, isn't it? Something different. And for an even more unique look, you can also get these contrasting plates here in the metal plate style. It is hard plastic though, but really accounts for a more rugged look here already in the front. Who thinks this side profile, this vehicle here, looks like a toy car from the 90s? Join me in the comments. 4 meters 58 or 180 inches is the length here of the Defender 90. If you would go for the longer, and also the longer wheelbase, Defender 110, you have here additional 44 centimeters or 18 inches plus that would be you know the additional length right there this one of course so interesting because basically in the front you have a full-size off-roader a full-size suv but then with compact suv dimensions and length this is of course a very unique position on the market overall 18 inch steel wheels we have here just so loved in the contrasting white style also you can get a white contrasting roof this is just, just so amazing, you know, because that's how it's supposed to be with the Defender. You can go up to 22 inch aluminum wheels meanwhile, but what for? That's not how it's meant to be, isn't it? And suspension wise, in the European market, you can start with the steel suspension for the 90 Defender. Optional in air suspension, that is already included in the US market. We also have it here today. Of course, the air suspension adds even more off-road capability because you can pump it up, y'all. And when you put that air suspension all the way up, you have 38 degrees approaching angle, 40 degrees descending angle. The ground clearance, 29 centimeters or 11 inches and 90 centimeters or 35 inches wading depth. A very impressive styling also for the rear and hardly ever on the market we still find this upright building style for the rear and squircle tail lamps right here and the typical side opening here for the rear hatch because we have the replacement tire right here. And by the way, if you're interested in off-roading this one here or also the longer version, we also have a video with a special on that. The turning indicators in the rear are, by the way, right here. Oh, ain't that cute. The key is not premium at all, mm, not to my liking, but really solid and big door handles and door closing sound. That sounds great. Instead of the door with a, let's say, neoprene-like texture here, also soft. Uh, similar materials also used by Mercedes in their new EQS and the EQE, really cool feels really nice indeed and then these real screw applications to give this rugged look once again also here at the inside of the dashboard and they once said when they pre presented it at IAA Motor Show um, 2019 I think it was here that they could actually hang the whole car just you know right here and let it fly through the air basically just on a rope so they didn't do it for safety reasons but theoretically it's possible they say then the interior here basic and rugged that's how it's supposed to be that's still a land rover yes it is nothing like the predecessor defender but the defender is still as land rover ish as it gets you can see it here even the pu steering wheel in the base version so no animal leather here whatsoever that's great also here with these fabric seats so really cool that we still can get an animal free land rover that's great and the fabric seats will be more breathable and they're also way more comfortable than the slick surfaces they offer interesting that the back part position is controlled right here so that's unusual but why not it's actually quite practical seating position in the front 
very comfortable upright king of the road driving position so that's what i say in the front you have this full size suv or full size off-roader feeling but still you have compact dimensions that's so lovely about the land rover defender 90 and yeah it's already getting like hey let's get off-road and so on and have a lot of fun that's so cool here steering wheel up and down in and out very smooth process and once again these fabric seats are the most comfortable you'll sit in the land rover overall and a very nice option you can get here is the front jump seat either you have these cup holes in the front or you can push it up and then you have a third seat in the front sitting there is not ideal but it's definitely a lot of fun with three people here in the front let me test that actually you know it's a meme here when people say like minute 633 thomas in the back seat when i'm fitting into a, a very small vehicle but yeah that's maybe like today the time code with thomas in the jump seat <laughs> looking forward to that yeah that's indeed really funny it does fit headroom wise but with my knees here <laughs> what the hell yeah but still a lot of fun and yeah maybe for the kids it might be something interesting um, but they need to be like you know in the proper size in between so no child seat but then again not too tall so yeah definitely limited use hey get away with the knee i need to use the shifting lever <laughs> well and then there's also that thing that you plug in your smartphone right there and then you have it maybe here in the cup holders um but still you know then when you move it around sometimes it happened to me that all of a sudden it fell down right here and then you know in this really narrow position next to the seat and i had yeah you know took me 10 minutes to get it out again and this area is by the way also really amazing another grab handle here for the passenger and the defender stamp in there really you know rugged materials but that's totally fine yeah, at the same time they have a mix because here this neoprene style soft fabric um, is once again here it feels so so nice and also here at the lower part of the dash. Once again, this interior overview with a square look inside, that is just so amazing. I really love that. Then the shifting lever in an easy position. Here also the infotainment system, 10 inch, you can reach that very well. Apple CarPlay, you can see here, and that sound system is not too bad, but also nothing special indeed. And it's really great that we still have manual climate dials here, left and right, if you press this you can control the vent strength and when the engine is running you can also press this one here and then control the seat heating for example with that then the air suspension is set here all the off-road driving commands you know gear reduction and so on so this is all available right here and the shift and lever once again a very cool truck like place something like that really happy also with this unit in the infotainment system itself you rather use the apple carplay or android auto integration is good because other than that the normal main menu is really slow you have this interesting off-road information that's quite cool with the angles and so on that's nice other than that here the normal system looks like this map is we are responsive enough i would say that's actually okay but when you browse through the rest of the menu sometimes it looks a little bit old school and laggy on the steering wheel here you have the volume control but that's you know feeling really cheap and on the right side you set the cruise control instruments here today a mix of analog left and right and digital then in the middle part so why not actually and you have digital speed in the middle part that's all enough you can also get full digital instruments but these ones are cooler aren't they and the lower part of the jump seat or the back part depending on has more charging possibilities you slide the seat forward here to get in the back and then you can fold up these head restraints that's a quite good solution because um, you know when they are down you have a better visibility here in the middle seat you can still sit as a tall L. that's possible although it's you know still somewhat cramped headroom wise with one meter 86 or six foot one once again no problem here at all over on the vehicle really nice these additional windows here again you know this creates such a unique atmosphere to have these windows here good traveling feeling and even if i'm here behind my driver's seat it does fit with the legroom so indeed it is suitable for five tall adults plus jump seat whoever is supposed to sit there indeed and once again a nice very comfortable fabric here so it's really comfortable here and also super cozy yeah these retro um you know inserts here they're not really necessary i would rather have you know a clear view to the uh, to the outside but overall this car here on all seats once again delivers such a unique experience no other car has on the market 
Oh, and what's here? Underneath the passenger seat. Oh, here's the car battery. And here we have that side opening, so unique. The downside, of course, of the short version is the length here. It's at 40 centimeters or 16 inches. That's extremely short. You can see here this cabin trolley does fit in, but it's actually quite high here overall. This is just like, you know, this, you know, this cover here. You can easily remove it. And then you have this rugged plastic uh, thing in a metal skid look here in the back part and also here at the lower part. Really rugged indeed. And then you fold the seats from here already like this. Also with the ski hatch is possible like this split or then all the way like this. So let me remove this as well. And then you can see you have, you know, a big area still left, but you have this step there. That's of course a bad thing to have. Otherwise, if that wouldn't exist here, then you could easily just push all the things through and the trunk would be, you know, as easy to use as with the long version. In that way, of course, hmm, still has a disadvantage, of course. But the coolest thing are square dimensions here for the height, 90 centimeters or 35 inches in the height. That's amazing. And here in the width, it's about a meter or 40 inches. And that's really great for you know, gardening work, like put in big packs or something like this. And here the length then overall to the front seats, we are at about 130 centimeters or 50 inches. And I'll show you a nice trick how to unfold the seats again from the trunk. You know, it's, um, you know, like pulling in the anchor <laughs> like this, just use the seat belt. Engine choices, a two liter four cylinder petrol engine, three liter six cylinder or 5 liter V8 supercharged. Whoa, that in this vehicle, we will test it at a later stage. And there's also the diesel available, a 3 liter 6 cylinder, the small diesel not available anymore. And the good thing is, high displacement but low horsepower figure, 200 horsepower, you can also get in lower spec, still 3 liter of displacement. That's actually a way to go because so many engines nowadays are so highly tuned from low displacement and that can't go right, you know. So definitely a clever choice right here. We'll soon find out more in the driving part. Welcome to Thomas's retro driving lounge with the Land Rover Defender 90, that short version. And this is indeed the Defender, as I said earlier, as I would spec it. And the main thing here is this vehicle does still deliver you the typical Land Rover driving experience. That's the most important aspect. And that means you have a huge steering wheel. It is you know, not that at all. It has always you know, some input, but it has this off-road characteristic. That means you have to steer a lot because that's actually important in off-road driving that the steering wheel doesn't go all over the place, for example, you know, when you are hitting some bumps uh, and so on and so on. Then this one here equipped with the optional air suspension, which is standard in the US. But for the base entry-level versions, the 90 Defender in Europe, for example, you can also start with a normal steel suspension. But the air suspension here does a great job. It makes it more off-road capable. On demand, you can pump it up, y'all. <laughs> and it just gives you this super unique soft ride. And that's what I want. So when I buy a Land Rover and especially a Defender here, I want that off-road kind of experience. Even if I would take it, you know, Never in any off-road situation, uh, just drive it on the road. I want to feel the off-road experience and that's what this vehicle here is still delivering. Yes, it is completely different if you compare it to the old Defender, but still it is the Land Rover that still delivers you that off-road experience in the, you know, in, the, in the most way. Because when you're going like left and right, Car is shaking a little bit. 18 inch steel wheels here I also. That. Please? No. <laughs> that was the voice input. No idea. <laughs> okay. So, you know, the car is leaning, shaking a little bit, and also these um, smaller wheels make the ride just more comfortable. And I want that, you know. This car feels like steering a ship, although it is the short version. So, both Defender versions, long and short, deliver you somewhat the same kind of feeling. This one here, of course, then feels a little bit more, you know, agile. You don't feel that you would move around so much weight. Indeed, you move around 
definitely less weight, so that's an advantage, definitely. The driving experience, yes, more likable here with the short version. So if you don't need a rear space for your family or something, then you can just as well go for the short version and have this advantage that you can park in and out in the city just a little bit better. Roundabout visibility is also good because you have this upright building style of the windows. And I mean, yeah, there's no comparison even to comparing the old Defender in driving. This has nothing to do with it. And it's also, as I said, way wider, way longer. Here, when I'm just going off the side of the road with these all-terrain tires, who cares? If we, there would be some obstacle in front of us, we just go over it, you know? So this is the cool thing here. And it still delivers you such a unique driving experience, the most unique one in the Land Rover lineup. I just love that. You know, this car gives you the feeling it doesn't matter if I'm driving on the road now, if I just make a left turn and go across this field, I would not care and the car wouldn't care either. That's the thing that is transported in the driving experience here, even if you just drive it on the road. Fuel economy, by the way, here for the three liter six cylinder diesel. Oh, there's um, a Range Rover coming. Range Rover Sport it was. So, about 10 liters or more kilometers, so 20 something MBG US, close to 30 MBG UK. Of course, you can also get the petrol engines, as I said earlier, with the four, six, or eight cylinders. Um, yeah, the six in the petrol engine would probably like the best compromise between fun and still like not that high fuel consuming, like the eight cylinder that will like, go nuts in the consumption. The diesel here, yeah, it's not that fuel saving. But of course, also not that exceeding as you compare the petrol engines. It's a nice, smooth running. You hardly hear that engine. And they also have improved the noise dampening, of course, here on this new model. No comparison to the old FM at all. And also, if you compare to the rest of the Land Rover lineup, this one is very well insulated. So that's actually quite cool. And I love this upright A pillar, for example. Once again, this is still like a, you know, this is an honest vehicle and it's not pretentious as at all. So if you also compare it to the Mercedes G-Class, that's the main difference. The G-Class is definitely, me I mean, it is still offered capable with, you know, corresponding tires and, and so on. But mostly, you know, like a show-off road vehicle and used for short trips inside the city. That's what the G-Class is meanwhile basically for. Not saying that this one won't be for, used for that either, and why not? I mean, you can do that, sure. But you can get this one here at half the price of a G-Class and it's not pretentious at all. That's the thing, especially here in this equipment. You can also spec a, a rather pretentious Defender and make it like super expensive and so on. But this one here definitely, that's why I'm so happy that we got this kind of based version of the Defender for you today. I love that and that's exactly the way you should actually buy it. Now we're getting on the motorway and show you more about how does it handle actually at higher speeds. Now acceleration from 40 kilometers now, let's go. That's 120. 140. 150. And well, 60 kilometers now. Quite decent torque from that six cylinder diesel and I really love that it has the 200 horsepower version so it's still one of the very rare vehicles you can get with low horsepower while it has big displacement that's also really good for the um, you know for the long-term durability of our engine here 150 kilometers an hour of course wind noise is picking up because of the upright building form of that vehicle that's no wonder so it's not it's still okay you know it's still okay I would say like a very comfortable experience it would be more like at 130 kilometers an hour so like 70 80 miles an hour or something what about lane change with a higher speed here it's not too bad i mean we have the air suspension and the small tires but the car doesn't lean up too much so actually they found a very nice compromise there that it doesn't feel that shaky at higher speeds i would have thought it felt shakier at higher speeds so that is actually very well done so Definitely this Defender has so much more road capable than the outgoing one and it is comparable in the road capability to the other Land Rovers if you not think about the Discovery or something and 
really have to say um, the discovery steering feeling is way more vague you know and feel less and here we have very good control so I really have to say also from the driving experience you know what is this sure we will try still driving a little maybe drunk I don't know happens live here now he's getting on the lane yeah okay <laughs> back to the tunnel you can see not much ambient lighting going on here and I'm really surprised how well this also handles with this with the 18 inch small wheels here on the road yeah once again very well done and I can just say also driving wise if you compare it to the other Land Rover and even the Range Rover models this is just the Land Rover model overall that also delivers you the most driving fun and once again a Land or Range Rover will never deliver you the best driving agility fun. They're not made for that and the competition is just too big. You know, especially like BMW and Audi, they just can do it better and Land Rover or Range Rover will never beat them in the agile driving dynamics. But this off-road feeling here, they still have the vehicle for that. And that's what you get and that's just so lovely about this vehicle and still makes it so extremely unique. And yes, especially considering the price and this, you know, and the image factor and the freedom experience, off-road experience factor this car delivers. Yes, I would get it over the G-Class. And of course, for me, even more important than I can get this one as it is here. Just animal free on the interior with very comfortable seats that are also breathable. Such a great advantage if you compare it to the G-Class. If you want to compare it to the G-Class, check out our G-Class review. And of course also our Defender 110 reuse with a longer version. That one also with a big off-road driving parts here there.